Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Designer V2 and in today's tutorial, we're gonna take a quick look at how you would set up a project for any of you guys that may be brand new to Affinity Designer. So when you first open up Affinity Designer, you should be presented with this dialog box in front of us. However, if any of you guys aren't seeing this, and in fact, you have this view right here, then all you gotta do is head up to the top left-hand side to where it says File, go ahead and choose New, and then you should also have access to this right here. So what we're gonna talk about first of all is all of these icons that we have down here on the left-hand side, starting off with the new one right here at the top. And what we have inside of here is going to be a list of different size templates that we can use for our project. Just if you want something that you can go ahead and start on straight away, or if you have a specific size in mind for your project, such as an A3, or a business card, or maybe if you're designing a thumbnail and you wanna go for that full HD. In most cases, you will find a template ready-made for the type of project that you want to make. However, if you find that you don't have the project size in here in the template form that you want to use, then all you gotta do is go ahead and create your own. And we can do that just down here towards the bottom to where it says page width and page height. All we gotta do is change these numbers to be any size that you would like. So I'll go ahead and put in 3000 by 3000. Then once I go and hit enter, you can see we get a visual representation right here of how our design is going to look. Then just underneath our page height and our page width, we have the option to change our DPI. So this is gonna be really important if you guys wish to print your designs. If you do wanna print your designs and you want to ensure that is set to 300, as that is going to give you the best print quality and is the industry standard when it comes to printing your artwork. However, if you are designing for web or device, i.e. a mobile phone or a computer, or anything on a the screen, then you can go ahead and set that DPI to maybe 144 or anything that you would like, as it really doesn't matter. It's mainly important for those of you guys who want to print your document. Then underneath that, we have this create artboard option, which we won't talk about in this tutorial, as we're not gonna really create anything today. We're just gonna go ahead and set up our document. Then over to the right hand side, we have the document units and inside of here, we can change that from millimeters to pixels or maybe to points. This is dependent on how you guys like to work. So that is entirely up to you how you set up your document units. Then underneath that, we have the actual size zoom, which most cases I just leave as default. Then underneath that, we have the image placement and we've got a couple of options inside of here one being prefer linked and the other one being prefer embedded. And what this means is whether or not you want to save any imported images inside of your project file once you go ahead and save that. So if you wanna choose that prefer linked and you import any images into your project, once you save your file and you open it up in the future, it will try and find those images from its original location on your hard drive. However, if you find that you've deleted those images off your hard drive, then it will not be able to find them and you're going to have to replace them with different images. If you wanna avoid all that, then you wanna go and choose Prefer Embedded, where that will make a copy of any images that you import into your project and it will save it into your project file once you go ahead and save that. Then when you open it in the future, you will always have access to those images without having to try and find them or replace them. So moving on, we have our color tab and inside of here, we have a couple of different options, one being color format and one being color profile. And with the color format, there's gonna be two choices that you're really gonna be working with. And that is either gonna be the RGB8 or the CMYK. And without getting too technical about this, I'll just say that if you guys want to create for web or device, then you want to use a RGB8. However, if you guys wanna print your designs, then you wanna use that CMYK. And that is all you really need to know in terms of your color format. However, if you guys are creating designs for sublimation, then you also want to be designing and printing inside of RGB8. So underneath that, we have the color profile, and this is gonna be more important if you guys are gonna outsource to different printers, where you'll find that they may use one of these color profiles inside of here, 
and you could probably find that information on their website or by simply emailing them but if you guys are printing from home I wouldn't worry too much about the color profile so underneath that we have the transparent background and at the moment you can see that our document right here is white so if I go ahead and I turn that off you can now see it becomes transparent and this is really good for any of you guys that may want to create graphics without any backgrounds however I like to work with a white background to start with as you can always turn this off later on inside of Affinity Designer so moving on next we have our margins tab and inside of here you can set up all your margins for the left right top and bottom just to determine how close you want to get to the edge of the pages with your content then next to that we have our bleed and this is going to be really important for any of you guys that may want to print from edge to edge without leaving any kind of border around that and the default bleed that you are going to want to use is going to be three millimeters as that is the industry standard. So you can come in here and type in three millimeter. This doesn't matter what kind of document unit you are in, as it will automatically convert that to millimeters to points right here, or that will convert to inches or pixels. Then next we have this scale option, which is something that you're probably not gonna pay too much attention to. So we'll go ahead and just ignore that. So if you find that you guys have set up your own custom document size that you want to use again in the future, then we can go ahead and save this as a preset. And the way that you would do that is by coming up here towards the top. And we have this option right here that says save preset as. And all you got to do is give that a name. You want to change your category to be my presets. And once you go ahead and save that, you will find that all the way down the bottom here inside of my presets and you can select any one of these and you can either delete it just down here or you can rename that or alternatively if you have chosen a preset right here and you've made some changes maybe put that to 100 then you can find that we can also overwrite these settings right here which I don't recommend you do you're better off just setting up your own preset but the option is there if you want to do so then what we also have over here is the option to change from landscape to portrait as you can see with these two buttons right there we also have the option to save or favor any of these presets so we can find them a lot easier in the future then next to that we have the drop down menu which is a really just a quick way of going through all of our sub menus just to find anything that you are looking for a little bit quicker so moving on underneath our new tab we have the option to open up any previous projects that you may have worked on however that's probably not going to be an option for you guys if you are brand new to this software then next we have our recents folder where you can find any recent projects that you created at the moment this may be empty for you guys if you've never used this before however it will start populating over time when you start creating some designs then underneath that we have our templates folder and this is where you can find some templates online that you may want to download and import to use inside of affinity designer so underneath that we have our samples menu and inside of here is where you're going to find loads of different sample project files that have been created by the affinity team which you can go ahead and download and have a little play around with just to see how it's all been put together so that is it for this video that was a quick run through of setting up our document inside of affinity designer v2 so i hope you found this video useful and you've learned something today and i will see you in the next video